pattern we're going to do is a rubber leg swimming nymph. And this is probably my, my all-time favorite or most productive carp pattern that I fish. Uh, it's, it's caught a lot of fish in a lot of different situations and uh, in a lot of different water types and water conditions. Um, this pattern we're going to use a marabou tail um, back here at the rear. We'll do a dubbed body of some squirrel dubbing, again looking for something that's got some guard hairs and some, some bugginess to it. The thorax or the legs up here uh, is a, a, a stripped pine squirrel or like a zonker strip of, of pine squirrel that's been dyed uh, to kind of a rusty brown shade. We'll do our wing case out of uh, peacock curl and then we'll add some rubber legs in here um, and also make the antennas as well out of uh, some, some of that grizzly silly leg material. Uh, in terms of colors of this, again, uh, this, this rust shade probably day in and day out has, has produced more carp on, on fly tackle for me than any other color. Um, but all black works extremely well. Varying shades of olive and tan are very productive. Uh, for the grass carp, um, we, we throw either a cream color or uh, white color. They seem to prefer some lighter shades of this, this pattern on, in, in certain conditions. And hook sizes on this, I'll go ahead and put a hook in and we'll get started, but in terms of hook sizes, uh, fish these as large as size sixes and fours even in real dirty water just due to the, the bulk and the mass on the fly. Uh, it's extremely effective in pushing water. Again, we talked about that earlier and having some, some mass and some bulk to the fly. Um, so as big as size sixes and fours and down as small as maybe size uh, 14s and 16s again if you're fishing real skinny shallow water. First thing we're going to do is get some lead wire and we will weight this a little bit. I don't necessarily weight all of these, uh, but we'll just take uh, like some uh, medium sized lead wire and just take a few turns of this up in the, the thorax area in the front half of the hook shank. So we'll come in and uh, make maybe six or seven turns of the, of the lead just up in the thorax. Uh, due to the, uh, the, the pine squirrel strips that we wrap for the thorax, uh, it makes the fly a little more buoyant. So we want to add a little, or a little bit of weight to kind of offset that uh, so the fly will sink and get down. Uh, if you leave the weight off, certainly it will give you a fly that, that's going to be more of that neutral buoyancy uh, like the wiggle bug. Um, so it will sink real slow and you can suspend it in front of the fish for a longer period of time. Again, we'll work with that same uh, shade of kind of rust ultra thread again. And we're going to, first thing is we'll just take and lock our, our lead wire into into position so we'll build up a little dam of thread in front of it and just hold the lead there with our finger as we wind back over it and build up a little dam of thread at the rear of the, the lead just to keep it fixed on the hook shank and then we'll just kind of randomly come in and wind over that to make sure it's secured to the hook. At that point we can go ahead and wrap back to the bend of the hook and we'll get ready to tie our marabou in for the tail. And for the marabou, for this particular one, I'm going to work with, uh, this is kind of a golden brown marabou. Uh, and what we're looking for is, is a feather that's got um, the most degree of fluff or, or web, if you will, to it. Um, I've got a feather that I've already pulled out here. Um, and you can see it's is pretty full up through the tip area. So when we, when we pull all this down and tie it in, we get a nice full tail that's got a lot of movement uh, when, when we're actually fishing and swimming that fly. So we'll remove all this real heavy web and some of this inconsistent color um, from the base of the feather. So we're up working with those nice soft tips and the, and the more pliable part of the feather. Uh, again, so it, it's, it's swimming and providing some motion for us on the finished fly. And in terms of, of length on that, um, we'll measure that uh, roughly about a, a hook length in length. Um, you can, again, make those a little shorter or a little longer depending upon the types of water that you're fishing in and, and, and the fish that you're fishing for, what they're, uh, how they're reacting to the fly. And just to help so that we don't have to apply as, as much dubbing to the body, I'm going to wind over the, the butt end of that marabou up to about where my lead wire was, it was wrapped at about the midpoint of the hook, and then we'll come in and trim off that excess. So we're just building a little underbody of marabou uh, so that we don't have to apply as much dubbing on there. And we'll go ahead and take our thread back to the rear of the hook, right in front of our tail. And we're going to work with the same squirrel dubbing that we used on the, the wiggle bug, uh, the, the SLF squirrel dubbing. So it's got just a little bit of, of sparkle to it, a um, little bit of SLF mixed in with the, the squirrel guard hairs. And again, we'll work with that same rust shade. And 
we want to again just dub a, a simple tapered body. Um, what, what you've probably seen with the flies that we've done, uh, for the most part these are pretty simple patterns to tie. Um, certainly my philosophy with fishing flies is getting patterns that will uh, that are quick to tie at the vise, that, that the materials are readily available for. Um, it's certainly more important to be spending time out on the water uh, catching these fish with the flies we're tying rather than sitting at the vise having to has spend, spend a lot of time to put them together knowing that we're gonna, they're going to get torn up by the fish and we're going to lose them in the trees and whatnot. So we'll just dub a gradual tapered body and we're going to dub this up to about the midpoint of the hook. And just a little bit more dubbing on there. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a natural dubbing like this. You can work with synthetic if you want something a little more translucent. As I mentioned earlier on, we like to try and keep things uh, pretty subdued in color on these, so pretty dull. And that's why I like to work with, with a fair amount of natural material in many of these flies. So now that we've got the, the uh, abdomen or the rear portion of the body dubbed, we're going to use some peacock curl for a wing case. And we'll just work with just a standard peacock. And I'm going to take about six or eight strands of that hurl. Just pull it out of the strung patch. And for these, since we're not going to wrap this, we're going to treat it as a wing case. I'm going to tie these in by the butt ends. We want to work with that thicker, a little bit coarser end of the, the hurl so we've got um, more or less the, the, the tougher part of the, the stem to work with so it's a little more durable. And then we'll go ahead and set this in as a wing case right in front of our dub body. Lock that in with a few turns of thread. And now we're ready to, to wrap that thorax. Um, you can do it with dubbing and pick it out, uh, but it's just a little bit quicker and a little more durable if we work with um, these little micro pine squirrel strips. Uh, it's just a real thin cut uh, pine squirrel, uh, again a very small zonker, so it works great to just wind up through and, and create a thorax on these. When you're doing smaller sizes, uh, this is a size 8 that I'm working on right now, um, and these will take you down to about a size 12. When you start doing the little 14s and 16s, it's generally best to dub this because the length of the, the squirrel is just a little bit too long. It becomes a little bit out of proportion for the hook size. So we're going to take our, our squirrel strip and on one end of it, we'll just strip a little bit of the fur off so we get down to that, that bare piece of, of hide or leather there. And we'll tie that in right at the junction where the the body ended and where we've tied in our wing case. And then we can go ahead and advance our thread forward. And again, just like we did with the wiggle bug, we want to make sure we leave enough room at the eye of the hook. We've got quite a bit of stuff going off and quite a bit of bulk to tie off up there. So I'm going to leave about a full eye's length um, behind the eye on the hook shank to make sure I've, I've got enough space without crowding everything. And then we'll go ahead and wind this, um, basically just treating it like a soft tackle. As we wrap forward, we'll just pull back the previous wrap so we're not matting it down. We want to get this nice and full and just lay each wrap right in front of the previous wrap. So we're basically like doing a big hackle collar, um, but you can really crank on this stuff. And I, I mentioned the durability of it. Um, this is a great fly for a lot of warm water applications, not necessarily just carp. Um, but the, the, the hide certainly, um, or the, these micropine squirrel strips, will give you a lot better durability than just a, a traditional dub body. Bring that up to our tie-off point. And we'll go ahead and tie that down. Go ahead and lift that up. We'll come in right over the top of the eye to trim off our excess so we can get a good clean cut on that. And then some of this, this bulk up here on the top, rather than just pulling this down to the side and then pulling our wing case through, I'm going to come in, just rotate the vise a little bit, and come in right on the top. And I'm just going to not open my scissors real wide, but I'm just going to trim a little pocket right down the top of the thorax. Just remove a little bit of that fur so we've got a nice clean area to bring that wing case right through the center of it. Take and bring our peacock curl right up over the top. And we'll tie that down. Just take a couple loose turns and then tighten. And we're going to leave this little bit of excess sticking out here over the front. And we'll trim that off here in just a minute. The next thing we'll do is go ahead and put our legs and antenna on. And for that, we're going to work with uh, again, just some of the, the grizzly uh, silly leg material. Um, and, and you can work with different variations. I'm just kind of giving you the colors that have worked the best for me in the waters that I fish. And certainly carp are very opportunistic fish. Um, so you can experiment with colors and kind of sky's the limit. I mean, they eat a lot of different things and a lot of different insect life and, and crustacean life that you'll find will be varied colors. So you can, you can experiment with some of those colors. 
I'll just take one strand of this and I'm just going to double it and cut it in half and we'll take one piece of it, we'll come in on the near side of the hook and we'll just leave a short amount of it sticking out over the, the uh, in front of the eye of the hook and we'll set this in right on the side of the hook. Uh, again, a rotary vise, um, like, like this Dynaking Professional vise, does a nice job to be able to, to just turn that a little bit. Um, and we'll do that to do the back side so you can get a little bit better viewpoint. Just rotate the vise and come in and set the second set of legs and antenna on the back side of the hook like so. At this point, I'm going to take and pull the antenna and the hurl back away from the eye, and we'll build up our head there. And I'm going to build up a, a pretty good bump of thread in there just to help lift that stuff away from the eye of the hook so it's a little bit easier to, to thread it with your leader or your tippet. And I'm also kind of jamming that uh, peacock curl since we've tied it down right back in here. Um, I'm jamming thread wraps in front of it just to, to really keep it secure so it won't pull through. We'll go ahead and get our whip finisher hooked up. And we'll come in and just pull all that stuff back out of the way. Do our whip finish. Snug the knot up. Come in with our scissors and trim that right down next to the head. And now we can do a little trimming and cleanup work with our legs and with the, the, the peacock curl. The hurl, I'm just going to lift straight up and come in with my scissors and I'm just going to trim it about an eye's length above the tie-in point. So it's similar to like what you would see almost with an elk hair caddis. There's just a little tuft of, of peacock right there and it also helps aid in keeping those, those two antennas separated. The two antenna, I'll just take and kind of squeeze those together and I'm going to come out here um, about maybe a, a quarter to three-eighths of an inch in front of the eye of the hook and just trim those off. Just have some short little feelers up there. The two legs that are laying back near the body, um, again, generally you can trim these a little bit longer if you want to because it's always easier to, to shorten them up while you're fishing if, if you feel you're getting refusals from the fish because the legs are too long um, or because even the presence of the leg, you can cut them out of there. Um, so always trimming stuff like this a little bit longer is better, but as, as a general rule of thumb, just so they don't foul around the hook point, I trim them maybe a third of the way back into the tail to give me the length of my legs. We can separate those, and then we'll come in, and our last step, just a couple of wild hairs right up here at the eye of the hook, we'll trim those out, and now we'll go ahead and take our head cement and apply a, a good coat of head cement on the head to finish this off. And this pattern, again, in terms of, of fishing this fly, um, you can, I use it in shallow water situations. I use it dead drifting it, uh, just you know, dead drifting as a nymph in a, in a river situation. You can put a bead on it if you'd like to. Uh, with that little bit of weight up here in the, in the thorax area of the fly, um, it really has a, a good jigging or a swimming action. And with the movement of the materials, um, there's a lot of life there. And again, certainly one of my favorite flies for, for carp.